so there's two poles and then, then that's really fine and we we stake rebar in and then we um sorry there's just like a harrier and i'm wondering if we'll catch it but no it's probably too far away um i can start again Welcome to Mugaha Marsh. We have been banding songbirds here for the past 27 years now. When we started out, there was really nothing at this site. We just set up a table and uh, some nets. And over time, we had uh, more volunteers from town interested in coming out and helping. And slowly over time, we've uh, developed this place to the point now where we have an actual banding lab, a kitchen, camper trailers that we move in each year so people have a place to stay out here. We put the boardwalks in, we built a viewing platform up here, we put a telescope on to look out over the marsh and just little by little over time we've uh, developed a site and hope to continue doing that. My name is Ryan Bichon, I am the president of the Mackenzie Nature Observatory. We actually hire birders now to assist us as full-time employees for a portion of the summer. Not just anybody can uh, decide one day they're going to start catching birds and, and putting bands on them. You actually have to have training and you have to have a permit. Funding that we get to pay wages to them comes from grants that we receive and our largest funder is the Fish and Wildlife Compensation Program. The station is really great because it's in a very interesting place geographically. It's in the Rocky Mountain Trench. So we get an, uh, an interesting mix of both Eastern and Western birds as well as hybrids between the two. The station in general is, it's a beautiful spot just on Mugaha Marsh. The volunteers are the most dedicated people I've ever met. Like they're constantly bringing out uh, goodies for us. They're fixing things as needed. Even you saw today our fridge broke this morning and then within an hour, someone was dropping off um, another fridge for us. My name is Kristen Mancuso. I'm a wildlife biologist. I'm currently working as a bird bander here at Mackenzie Nature Observatory. When we're, you know, doing our daily operations, it might look like we're just, um, you know, things are easy. But I, on the back of my mind, we're constantly thinking, what's the weather like? How windy is it? How cold is it? Is there rain coming? The other thing is predators. So if there's a predator spotted, like the other day, there was a weasel at one of our nets. So we had to close it immediately just in case. And then handling. We have to make sure that anyone who's handling a bird here knows how to do so safely. Every half an hour, we check all the nets, extract any birds that might be caught in them, and then we do our bird banding operations, which involves putting a unique numbered band on the bird. So that way, if the bird is ever caught again, it'll provide us some insight into bird movements. But on top of that, the bigger thing is just identifying trends in species and diversity and ages and sexes. So over time, we can see, you know, are some species increasing? Are they, are they declining? Um, is diversity changing? Is condition of birds changing? Is the number of young birds changing? So providing that, that information, not just at this station, but across North America, provides a really good snapshot. We try and standardize everything here as much as we can. So we open on exactly the same day every year. We finish on the same day every year. We open the nets at sunrise, run them for six hours a day. We check them every half hour on the 30 minute mark from when we open. We use the same nets every year. So we try and standardize everything that we possibly can so that our information is comparable year after year. I'm Zoe. I'm the second assistant bander at Mackenzie this year. I got into banding uh, down in Basso uh, in the Okanagan and I was a volunteer there for two years. This is my first ever um, paid banding job and it's been really good. The diversity here is really cool to see. They get so many different species that I've never seen before or gotten to band. I'm the second assistant bander. Uh, Kristen's the assistant bander and then Laura's the bander in charge. There's a really awesome team of volunteers around the station that's been really, really wonderful to see. I feel very supported as an individual here. I feel like I'm a member of a team. It's a wonderful place. It's really, this, this is a wonderful station to be at. We had this song sparrow that we have um, affectionately called Super Sparrow, who um, was first captured, and I believe, in 2012. And he was recaptured every year after that for 10 years. Always in July, I believe. Almost in the same net every year, too. 
My name is Sue Crosby. I'm currently the secretary for the Board of Directors of Mackenzie Nature Observatory. So really our banding station here at Mungaha Marsh began uh, with the efforts of Vi Lambie, who is an avid birder in the area, very, very knowledgeable, very capable, and she just kind of had this way of inspiring people to appreciate birds and appreciate nature and she was really the driving force behind starting this whole program and for many, many years was the driving force in keeping it going. And the long-term volunteer, John Lambie. <laughs> and he maintains everything out here. I stay out here quite a bit. Most years I have stayed out here on weekends. I love it, it's great. Extracting birds actually calms you down. It's actually quite nice. Founders themselves are a very close-knit group, and it's a small world. We have a huge variety of birds, which is a real pull for um, the birding community to come and visit us. The data that we collect here is uh, summarized at the end of the season. It's used by Bird Studies Canada, the Canadian Wildlife Service, the Canadian Migration Monitoring Network. In that way, we can, over time, monitor how birds move and where they go when they migrate.